Dart is a structured web coding language, so it's a new programming language. We also develop tools, and there's a whole open source project to have it. And also, Beaverx is a technology tool, so there are many things that will change if you program the build of your programs. And, but still, try it out. It's sufficient state of fast to write a decent sized program. So, why do we do it? Um, the current web has some good parts, so we really like the JavaScript is flexible and supports incremental development. You can write your programs. You just go to the browser and execute, you don't need to compile anything. Um, and it's also nice for, for, for writing and deploying small applications. You can just put it on somewhere and then you run it on the browser and have it installed and it will just, just work not on every, every platform. Um, however, there are some parts that are not that nice. We tried to write large programs at Google, which is a little soft, a little soft line of code, and it's just difficult to read about the structure. Standard performance is not good, but Gmail, you can usually see the small part that comes up what you actually see your mail. Um, and there's no way to, to, to document the content, it's basically like types. Uh, they are working now on modules and package and stuff, but at the moment, JavaScript doesn't have. Yeah. And for certain reasons, there are not really good tools. You can't just refactor like it keeps everything in Java and works in JavaScript. It's probably the easy thing. You just don't have any good tools. So, me and Horace and Google in general we started, we need to do something about that. So, we tried to move the development of the platform forward. And we need the language to write big applications in JavaScript. To bring Google Apps to the new ways to develop Google Apps and other programs. Um, so, JavaScript is nice, but we thought we needed something better. So, the design goals for Gartwood we definitely want to have something that is for the web. So, we want to have something that is fast and startup because you can, you can send parts and still could, even with parts start executing your program. We want it to be family familiar, otherwise we won't have any traction on the web. We need to something that people know. Um, it should run on, on all devices eventually. And since in the beginning we will adopt the not in every platform, we need a way to compile the chart. And there are some decisions that definitely were made because we need to compile the chart. So how does it look and feel? Um, it's an object-oriented language. Um, it has gas based hierarchy like Java, which is in inheritance in many cases. We have optional steady types, so this is maybe the most new feature for some people. Um, it has proper like scope, but it's not expected. It's single thread and it's an interfaceable listener, so I probably will not have to, to, to explain that. So let's see some code. Let's start with Small level work. So, this is actually a, a dartboard. You can run it on a dartboard to try this out. So, first, small program. I expect to be. I expect to be this just in print. So, now, as it is, I want a small variable. Output is not really helpful because so you can't um, 
So you need to, 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 to add it to string methods to actually have it as output. And here we have the first rule syntax for Java programmers. This is just a shorthand for return next expression. So in this case we want the string that returns. And we have the first as output. So now let's continue this. And the second point. Let's print that on two. Function. 
that is therefore the ID. So what methods can I call on this, this variable? Because you are saying it's an A, I will just believe it. Okay, it. Um, so as I said, type conditions don't have any effect at all on the on the semantic runtime semantics, and this, this was also important for some sign for some sign features we made, for some um, decisions we made. So let's just go back to the example we had and illustrate that. So for one, let's say I had a wrong type. The first thing you notice since it doesn't have any effect on the program at all. We will get a warning from the from the static check checker, it will say this is not assignable, but the program is still bad. So okay, type type warnings, and we want to call them errors in theory, type warnings are not will never stop your program from running. It will still do whatever what, what it's supposed to do. We have a mode, a check mode, where we actually verify the, the, the variables in every assignment we check that the variables are actually the right type. But in production mode, the types are just wrong. So I can put that back. And that's now something else. Let's say the distance to it. Thank you. 
discuss factory needs and demands. It's constructor. And now here, instead of writing a point, I can write the point of operation. <coughs> this reminds me of probably C++, but there are some slight differences to the semantics. The reason we have uh, this common thing and we allow the value afterwards and the actually really wants. The reason we have the uh, initializer list is that we never want to be able to see a final tool that is not initialized. In Java, for instance, you can have things that are final and still are not initialized. And by having two separate phases, two separate phases during construction, you can make sure that you'll never ever see a thing that is not initialized. Yes, so the, 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 no, the, in the initial definition list, you don't see this, you don't have any access to this. So, since you don't have access to this, you can't access to this another initial list. So, now back to so something completely different the isolate, which is our defense mode and security mode. So the idea is that ISOs are, are lightweight processes, that is, they, they are like threads, but in the sense they, they are very lightweight to create, but they don't have any access at all to, they don't have any shared memory. So they have a separate shared heap. You can't touch data from, from, the other, from another ISO. If you want to communicate with another ISO, you have to go through uh, message passing, so reports. And, um, and just to get back to the beginning, I said that um, Dark is single threaded, that's true as long as you're inside one ISO. ISOs themselves can come run completely separately, they can run in separate threads. As long as the message passing is working fine, you still don't see that it's actually But it's not. So, what, what do you mean by sending ports and messages and so on? The message passing system in Dark is such that you have one mailbox where you can receive data, and then you can give your addresses to other people and other ISOs. So in this case, for instance, I have one asset that has two, has, uh, two main boxes and it gave away the, uh, the green, the green uh, address. The important thing to note is that the main boxes themselves can't leave an asset. So the only thing you can do is actually give, a, give an address to somebody else and then, you can, and then the one that got the address can send the data. So maybe that's a little bit more wordy. So we have receive ports, these were the red boxes before, the main boxes. Those accept and they queue all incoming messages, and you can register a callback handler for whenever a message appears. Of course, only out of order. So, when a message arrives, you have to initialize it in your isolate, and then in the, in the, in the, in the loop, in the event loop, you will receive and you will handle the next, you will call the callback and handle the next event that arrives. You can create as many receive ports as you want. So, in the previous example, there were two of them, but you can create as many as you want. And then you can create as many send ports, send port, which, which is the address to your to your receive port. You can create as many send ports as you want. You can just pass them around. However, if you don't give one error, if you don't create one, if you don't give one away, nobody will have access to your receive port. So this is a way to limit the to make the secure, unfortunate transfer of capability. So if you only want one person, one other asset to talk to you, to a specific port, receive port. You can only give that one the send port and you know that whenever there's a message coming to your, to your receive port, it comes from the person, from the asset that you gave it to. So this allows a secure mode where you basically put your programs into different isolates and make sure that the communication only goes through secure ones, through the ports that you control. So let's again, let's again go back to the example one and I will show you some how isolates. The, the current version work is those are definitely going to change. But it's still nice. So let's start with the menu. So we have a menu and we want to create a ping server, ping isolate, package isolate, isolate, we spawn them, we spawn it, and then when it's ready, we receive send port to it. And we will then 
given that Z code we will send a message. So now let's create the echo isolate. So we want this echo isolate that extends the isolate. This is similar, similar to the thread system in Java, except we don't have the same difficult observation. It's okay to extend and not just run the run it And the echo isolate will have a main, which is running the new isolate. And it will receive the port automatically. And when with that port, when it receives a message, we want it to take the message. And given the message, we want it to print the message. actually sends back the message and doesn't just print it. Um, yeah, I, I will just, there are many other examples I could give, but I think this is, is just to show you can send messages, you can receive them, you can say, you receive ports which I didn't do. In theory, I should probably close the port here too, because otherwise the, 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 the isolate is going to be alive forever, since it can always receive some data. But all those things may just so tools, as I said, we need the tools. Um, the way we want the program start programs to run is to write the file source, and then either you just send it to uh, web browser that supports type right away, which would be the right side without me, or if you don't have that or you want to bring it to users that don't have it installed yet, you can run it through the tools. And then either run it through Dark C, which is the Dark compiler, and then have it in JavaScript, so this is basically a quick equivalent of Dark. Or you can run it, you can compile it to Snapshot, and then send it to Dark M2. And I will go to the Snapshot first. The reason for Snapshots is that um, we mentioned that uh, it's much, much, much faster to do that. So the, when we talk about Snapshots, we run the program, we start it up without any as long as it doesn't have any side effects, and before, just, just before we enter the main disk, then we take all the objects, serialize it, and, and use that to, to send it to the, the outside. And we mentioned that by doing that, instead of having to parse all the 
54,000 lines and fill in the object, which took about 620 seconds. But just taking the snapshot and re deserializing it, we were up to 16 milliseconds. So we get an improvement in the speed and the startup speed of a factor of 10. So we really want to make snapshots to work. Because it's going to make things so much faster. So now back to the, the performance that they currently have. So this is, these are numbers from about one week ago. Uh, we have a, a VM that runs that, that natively, and then we have on the so this is the VM column, and then we have the DRC column, which is basically taking the same DART code, combining it to JavaScript and running it on the V8, and all those are compared to handwritten JavaScript on the V8. So when you run the DART programs on the VM. Currently, they are about an average, let's say, 50-60% of the AXP. And that's not because we can make it faster, it's just that the AXP is extremely faster than it. We have a lot of resources in that we are fast. And the VM is not there, but we know that we can make it at least as fast as the AXP. By construction of the DART language, we know that it's much, much easier to make it faster. And on DART scenes, we really hope that we get 100%. The reason is, amongst other things, that we can do study optimizations that you can do jobs you can do and you can do other stuff. And even though we have some overhead by supporting features that are like, uh, the jobs that doesn't support, we still should be able to get the very close to jobs. And in some examples we are really fast than we can. So um, we during the development we try to start writing a program as early as possible so that we can have an idea of does it actually work and what's the speed in the field of writing time? And some guidance here, they know the English reader and people in the dark. So there are several thousand lines of code. And I will just show that one. Okay. So this is the English reader. Uh, it's, I think there's a program house something, it's inspired by that one. And you can so they, 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 they have started writing that. Um, the nice thing about this uh, Swarm newsreader, and I can't show that unfortunately, is that they make really sure that it works on the iPad, the Android phones, the browser, the iPhone, and not, not, not just only that it works, but it looks native. <coughs> so they make sure that when they wrote the program, they encapsulate everything and wrote the libraries, so that when you write your programs, you can make them run on every connect platform and fix them with And of course, we want to push this down to the device. So, I think we would like to write such a program. Uh, the code is already in the, in the repository, you can just check it out. The only thing is, it's not that easy to use to actually make it get the image read as feeds in because it's supposed to run on the server somewhere. But, but the code is there, everything is. So also we have, a, we have started working on an editor. Um, it's, it's based on a um, Eclipse um, um, component, so it's not a Eclipse plugin, but just a little bit lower. And um, again, the code is same there. Um, we haven't yet, we have yet uh, there is more pre-built version yet, but you can definitely check it out by yourself. So this is the entire editor. I call it going to be a bunch of exceptions. So, so just to start with it creates an application, you can then run it and it will hopefully launch the browser. This is a compiled version of JavaScript. So what's really nice about the, the editor, and that's the one of the reasons we developed in new languages, in this case everything is nicely typed. And this means that you can use completion to get the Seeds that are available in, in, in your, in your cast. This is something that we really, really miss in, in JavaScript. Not being able to have a 
road completion of the infection. And this is one of the things that we like, that, that we push for now. And we have a we have a team that tries to do the better that. So we still have an infancy, but for all the completion we already have, we have support for that and we want to go the whole route. We want to have more or less each other and combine it. So, and again, the code is just there, you can buy the test of Charles. So, debugging, uh, there is um, Firefox, Chrome, and everybody else is trying to get the source maps into the browsers. So, when you compile from, from Dark to Charles, you compile a separate file with the source map from, from, from Dark to Charles. Um, and obviously, what we want eventually is that you use the, the, the Chrome, the Chrome build that has started to it, which is not available yet. But that's that's the ultimate goal, of course. And then you will have a nice environment inside the project. And I imagine it will be connected to the Keeps editor. So again, um, there are some things. So it's not yet done. We, Try to release as early as possible as the moment we had something that was more or less uh, usable for trying out. Um, there are some things we, we like, would like to have, like for instance, REST arguments and new ones, or, or definitely have no to need reflection support too. So, for those that are interested, we are interested to come to most likely these uh, videos without reference on our project, which is always paper. It's going to be no better. Um, then, better matching, since we have the Canon like message pass, and we also want to be able like decoding of messages. And maybe some other features. So if we have an issue tracker, we get feature requests all the way. And some of them we actually so it's not, We are not yet finished, and we would like to This set, of course, we try to keep the language visible and not too loaded, and there must be some features that keep really, really want and we are not going to implement, but still give it a try. So now yes, to the open source project. So we have uh, two, two sites, darklang.org, where we have specification tutorials, which is basically the entry point for people that uh, want to learn about Dart. And then we have the, the, the code code site, where we have all the codes and, uh, and the projects basically the code. So you can check it out. There's some, some wikis on how to do that. Try it out. So, final small conclusion. Um, so we tried to make a structured programming language for the web, which is, as I said, designed for the web, and is familiar to a programmer. We have two execution modes, the VM, and by the way, the VM is already in the, the repository, it's just an integrated into the program. And, uh, and it's compiled with JavaScript. And we try to make it such that when you write your program in Dart, you can then just compile it to the JavaScript and run it in any other browser. Um, try it out. And if you have bugs or feedback or issues and feature requests, let us know. Questions? Do you support uh, the types of APIs that are available today in JavaScript, like the DOM APIs? Uh, so, yes, we have, a, we have a, a, a library for the DOM. They try to generate. So it's, it's still done, but they, 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 they of course look the jQuery and all the other frameworks. So it's really it's something people like. I mean, not just a few here we heard that people like it a lot and trying to push the same to the JavaScript. Um, yeah, most likely also making the most likely also experimenting with uh, having higher level abstraction. Like, basically. Yeah. Yeah. APIs from but this is fortunately not my main fortune before. Um, and we have some some bad guys in Seattle. Did you try the example of private variables? Okay, I can do that. Okay, spot it. I can definitely do that. Um, um, so we don't have any privacy. In, no, no, we have not. We don't have any um, object based privacy. So to give an example, our privacy is uh, based on, on the naming, which we call the DMI for you first, but there's a good reason for that. 
So if you prefix your variable with an underscore, it's a variable, it's an identifier that is only visible in the library you have. And that's, that means that it's not object based, but it's library based. It also means that um, you and the compiler and the editor, everybody knows even at the call side that you are accessing a private variable. So if you have now uh, a variable here x, I mean I can't demonstrate the, the, that it's private because I'm going to be on the one library with the target editor. But this is uh, this is a uh, the way you, you um, write private variables. go from one library to another and then go back and still have visibility to the previous to your super super parent but but it goes to package files. So you can do it uh, sorry, talking about library packages on there. Well packages are not. I was just saying the package file in the sense of Java. We don't have packages. We have any yeah. libraries. It's kind of Thank you. 
the new thing they have changed a lot since there's not much physical in there anymore, so you definitely look at the quarter line when it's time to have a call on this. But the drivers can also take it for the new ones who don't have any effect on the ones who have to take the ones who sacrifice. So it will be possible on the client side and the driver side of this thing to take start code, compile that code and be taking a long time to do that. Um, at the moment, definitely not. So we have support for the movies for the call ideas, and it means that there are some people that have crashed on it a few years ago, but it will break, you know, and it will most likely change it, and it's not it's supposed to be, and it's not, it's, it's not a, it's very brittle. So we knew we had the libraries that need JavaScript access, and made it in such a way that we can use JavaScript, but there can be name conflicts, and, and other things, so the, the current native interface is definitely not supposed to be something that people should use. And as I said, we're probably going to break anybody that did um, If we are going to um, have a, so backtrack, um, the quick team allowed easy charge with access and really, really regretted the decision. They, there are many things they can't do anymore, they didn't want to do. Uh, want to have, but they just can't avoid it anymore because they have this easy access to JavaScript and they made it clear that we should not have that. Um, it's maybe nice, but it's also a um, So the, the third thing is that we could break the, uh, the, the uh, isolation properties. So we have isolated on JavaScript. Now if you're allowed to access JavaScript, you basically make it impossible to, to, to Sure that every isolate is really isolated. And we are thinking of ways to get a dart code compiled to some kind of JavaScript that runs then on your web page, even though you don't trust the, 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 the guy that gives you this code. Then it will still run in an isolate, so we are going to be trying to, to make something happen there. And if you allow JavaScript access directly, we should basically screw you that. So if we have JavaScript support, it will go through isolate. So we need to, to say, okay, this is my isolate interface, it's JavaScript, and if you want to communicate with me, you have to go through this interface. As if I was a native type. Not native type. But for the adoption, actually, in this technology, we will find a native Because you can, you can have this animation default to really love everything just to learn about it. It's, it's not, it's, it's, um, we, we hope that new projects will be written in Dart. Um, if you have old code, yes, sometimes you will have to stick with your jobs. I mean, so, uh, just an example, if you want to, at the moment, if you wanted to use a, a, some MetaGL image or where you have to pass a video right in your image, if you need to go through the isolate boundary to, to, to use the JavaScript, I still found it in some copy chairs, so you can use copy chairs, so it will not work. So even though you have this JavaScript license, if you provide a JavaScript license, there will be some programs that still won't make it, and if you need the JavaScript. So there, is, there are some restrictions, and, and we, we really hope that actually if you write a program, write it in dark. We hope that we will definitely push internally for providing all our APIs in dark too. Um, yes, it's just there are so many difficulties with when you when you interface with uh, JavaScript. How is it kind of isolated as far as I understand? If you have something like a high and possibility for let's say safe mode. Let's, let's say something similar. Not that yeah, you want know, something a little bit easier, but this is just uh, we have not started writing more online for that. We just discussed it. Yeah, that's a 
there are enough people in the project who want one to use and will work on new genetic test frameworks. Um, we are not sure if they need to do anything on the language side to, to support that. We probably are going to just have libraries with a nice community of operator overloading, which makes it really nice so we have some we have projects, which means that you can just pass some function to the test. Them. So there are many things that make it easier. Uh, at some point, we will probably have annotations, and then maybe we want something to do But for now, we, we are going to write in the test framework that we are going to use. Because we need them out. Yeah, as I said, the small thing is to make cloud lines of code. We have tests today to make sure that the offer doesn't break down, especially when we change the language underneath every second. Week, they will see that you will see it's not broken.
Well, not, not really. So what we would like to have is a good caching, to use the caching from the browser. Here, the caching from the should be up. So if you have shaper, for instance, and you use the Google provided ones, you basically avoid the downloads of all the browsers. Uh, we, we have the environments that need to be My personal, and that's, that's not yet agreed upon in the team, is that we should have a, a SHA-1 on libraries. And if you, if you write a SHA-1 and it's already in the browser, it just needs to catch it. This way you won't get any packaging or anything, which is basically and if somebody has to come in to say you want to do a privacy concerns you just avoid the download. But as I said, we have the we have the uh, how you want to do it. But if you want to use the browser to test it. So
quite big problems. We don't necessarily want to replace JavaScript. We want to, for small things, JavaScript is nice. We want to do for small things a largest asset. But our goal is not to get rid of JavaScript. If you want to use JavaScript, fine. You can support both both the apps and the browser. Uh, what we want, of course, is to have cloud everywhere. You can manage the moments. Uh, our goal is to show that, and the way we want to get there is to show that it's just easier, better, and faster to go back and not people basically back to JavaScript and, and complain that, that on the other cross is just more than it's not as well, and it's bigger and smaller than the other cross is before. We can't really do anything much else. Uh, the specification, uh, if, if you have, if it's actually used for somebody else, we will work with them and we will eventually specify. At the moment, we will be the only ones in the center of the moment, so there's going to be a point in the center of the moment. Right for them, we will do it in the moment of the block. Standardizing is, is just interesting when you actually have to be one other person in the center of the moment. Yes, you, you mentioned something before the question is this is me. Interestingly enough, we are not going to use it all the time, typing in the code, unless you are part of JavaScript. So, in our experience, the static types are good. I actually not good enough to, to, to make fast payments. Anyways, for one, you have all these the, the inheritance, which is that you don't have anyways. And we do our profiling in the startup and save what types we actually saw. And that's when we actually we have the specific types. And we use that as so well. And this is also partially because we are in the code and therefore we have to do something similar to this in case you don't go out the types. And it turns out it's not the So that's, that's the way we catch it. We think that much faster, we just save all the what types of the scene and then use those types to actually optimize knowing the exact type, not just the thing is this. So we can do this if you want, but you can all type the information to do it. It might be another problem when you want to try it, but when you try it, it's just the introduction rules do not, do not, you can't rely on it, you must not rely on it. They're shown in some examples. Even if you deform types, the production mode, they don't just count. You have real file generics, and then you actually make some, you have them in front, but just type annotations, they don't care. You don't just type them, unless you have to check code, in which case you make sure that you have to do it in which is mostly for debugging, but hopefully it's a part of the same class that you can other questions? I quickly think that uh, I heard a lot of things about the choice of uh, typing that uh, you deliberately choose not to be sound typing. I don't know. Yes, I don't know. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Exactly, but uh, correct. can you? Explain a little bit about this choice and yeah. what, what, what it is. So, the main idea behind the typing system in Dart is to help the program. So, we want to make sure to have, we want to have, a, uh, we want types to be there as intent, show what you actually want. We want types to help you when you develop, to get the IDE, make you, help you to, to know what, what methods are in the object. To refactor and to all those things. Um, we don't want the types to be getting in the way. So, whenever you have a cast in Java, basically it gets in the way. And you want to just say, okay, it's not going to be sound, you know that. And it's also, it gets much, much more complicated when you have a, when you have a closures that you can pass in, when you have a generic types. Uh, in Java, then you have to specify the direction you can cast in. It's complicated. And, and in our experience, 
many developers either don't get it or, or don't like it or, or just have to work around the issues like casting and uh, everything. We know it's not sound, and, and I even showed you an example where you roll the object and assign it to a number and it still works. Uh, we didn't put that at all. And we can go to var and then assign it to something else and it will not warn you at all. We can assign the rules to a var which is untyped and then assign the var to a string. And since you went this untyped job, it will not warn you at all. So there are uh, some things in there that are not types here. If you are good enough to actually understand the types and, and, and want them to completely sound and everything like Canary or Haskell or write your, write your program and then compile it to start. Uh, it's, in general, we, we, we think it's, it's good enough, it captures many errors, and the rest of the old, we usually catch it. Uh, it's a choice. Yes, I did mention that. Uh, open process communication means that 
at the moment, at least, definitely, uh, it's only various strings, levels, maps, and all that part. If you fork from your own code, from your own ISLAB, and you know that the other side uh, is uh, something bigger, I mean, it's the same code, so you can set it something bigger, but from what we have specified at the end, we all think a lot about uh, XMD. So we have to specify on what we actually can send there. But at the moment, any that process is very really 